He's gone. It all happened so fast. Yeah. So his farm no longer. Hey, have another drink. <laughs> this should be a joyful sending off. That's right. It's no good to be depressed. Hey, I'm so sad. But uh, don't be, because I'm going to give you a little wave. Well, I gotta leave. Spring is beautiful with the cherry blossoms. Grandpa, this is a funeral. Come on. There's no time to be looking at the cherry blossoms. And wow, this place is a dump. Yeesh. This place has definitely seen better days. Sorry I'm late. Grandpa's already... This guy is literally Dwight Schrute. Like, literally. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> he even has the same color suit, more or less. Seriously, he's got the glasses, the hairdo, the cross eyes, even the little mustache from that one episode. I'll go talk with the villagers. Alright. Alright, Dwight. Go ahead. <laughs> Doggy! Hey, buddy. You really want to run the farm? Heck yeah. Okay. Do what you think is right. Come on, dude. It's true farms. Did Grandpa say anything at the end? Well, that's a funny story, Dwight. It kind of goes like this. Hey, Internet! It's Colorful Artie, and welcome to my next Let's Play, Harvest Moon 64. So Harvest Moon, for those of you who don't know, is the classic farming simulator series. The 64 version is pro most people's favorite. I know it's my favorite. Not the best, but definitely my favorite. It's got great music, got good characters, and it's just all around very fun. So those of you who are familiar with Harvest Moon will realize this is probably going to be a boring Let's Play, right? I mean, it's really repetitive. You grow crops and you do the same thing almost every day. Well, yes and no. To make it a bit more interesting, this Let's Play I'm going to try to get quote-unquote the perfect game, where you do as much stuff as you can in one playthrough and get the best ending. So that should be interesting, and I'll also be massively editing most of these videos, so... Well, at the beginning, you'll be seeing every minute of every day. Uh, future episodes, I'm going to be cutting a lot of footage out to make it much less monotonous and linear. So hopefully this should be still be an interesting watch. So I'll get much more into the details and main gimmicks of this game in just a little bit. But in the meantime, it's time for us to start a brand new diary. So let's do just that. Enter your name. One of my biggest pet peeves about the Harvest Moon 64 is the fact that whenever you have to name something, you only get six letters. Who thought that was a good idea? But at least Artie fits on. Enter your birthday. The day is always the 25th. This actually does play a role in the game, especially if you're trying to get the perfect game. If you're trying to get the perfect game, I would recommend doing summer or fall. My actual birthday's in summer, so I'm picking that. Your birthday does have a significant role in the perfect game, though. So, are these name and birthday okay? Yes, they are. Enter your ranch's name. Well, that's easy. It's the color farm. Whatever you put here will come before farm. So, it's not like you have to actually put farm at the end, because then you'd only have one or two letters to actually put something before it. So, this will be the color farm. Even though I also really wanted to do Shroot Farm, but someone else can do that. Enter your dog's name. Who's gonna get this obscure Arthur reference? It's Rory. Is the name okay? You betcha. So, we're finally getting in the game. So we start the game by eating, uh, if you're Japanese, rice balls, and if you're American, donuts. <laughs> you decide. 
So this is pretty simple top-down game, slightly at a diagonal, so that makes things a bit interesting. So we've got a sweet place here. We've got a bed. This, uh, the diary here is where we can sleep. Ahem. Ahem. Oh no, did it forget all of my buttons? <sighs> Please excuse me. Okay, nope. Here's tomorrow's forecast. It will be clear from the morning without a cloud in the sky. This is your TV. You have four different channels on it. For channel one is the weather channel. That's, you know, what the weather is going to be like tomorrow. Pretty useful. If we press, uh, right C. This month we have the planting festival on the 8th, the local horse race on the 17th, and the flower festival on the 23rd. This is the festival channel. Lets you know what festivals are coming up on which days. That'll be useful to know. If you push down C... It's the educational program. This is kind of a channel that gives you tutorial tips on how to run the farm. Are you having trouble with your fields? Turnips and potatoes are gone after the harvest, so you can grow a crop in the center after that. So you can use all nine areas without waste. Honestly, I am kind of an expert at Harvest Moon 64, despite never beating it before. I've made it to year three, but I didn't make it to summer year three, which is where it technically ends. Although you can play on for infinity if you get a good ending. And then if you push left C, in Japan, this is the Entertainment Channel, which has, like, random TV shows, but apparently they just didn't care about that in the American release, so it's static. That or they ran out of time. You decide. I'm gonna keep it on the Weber Channel, because this is really the only channel that I will even bother using. Yeah, Harvest Moon 64... Harvest Moon in general as a series is known to have a lot of glitches or just flat-out hilarious misspellings or random, like, mistakes in the game. Harvest Moon 64 is no exception, but fortunately, unlike a lot of games, the mistakes, glitches, and missteps in this game all can be used to your advantage, and like pretty much none of them are bad, which is great. So we'll have some fun exploring those. If we push start, we've got our tool bin, so this is where we can keep our tools. We've got the hoe, which we can use to till our soil on the farm, the sickle, which can cut weeds and grass, our axe, which can cut stumps into lumber, our hammer, which can be used to untill soil on the farm, and then our watering can, which we can use to water crops. We won't pay attention to these tools quite yet. These are our belongings. This is where we can store items like grass or crops. We can store them in here briefly. Uh, upper left corner lets you know what season, day, day of the week, and time it is. It's currently 6 o'clock. We have 300G to start the game off, and this is where we keep our special items throughout the game. We'll get more into these later. Anyways, this is our toolbox. This is where we can keep extra tools. We will not only have five tools throughout the game, we will keep getting new ones. We can only carry eight with us in our rucksack, so we'll have to put extra tools in here, cycle them out when we need them. And last but not least, this is our calendar. We've got five different stickers here we can put on important dates if we need to remember them. So that's just something to keep in mind. Anyways, that's enough tutorial stuff. Let's actually get going. Except we're not done with the tutorial stuff. Nice to meet you. I'm the mayor. I'm sure you have lots of questions. Shall I show you around the town or the village? Not a town. It's smaller than that. It's village. Yeah, sure. So this will have he'll have him. Uh, this will have the mayor show us around the town, kind of introduce us to the different places in the game. If you take this path, you head towards Moon Mountain and the vineyard. This way leads to the Green Ranch. They'll teach you how to raise animals. Oh, and they're looking for someone to take their horse. So you should drop by before the end of spring. And now we actually go into the village. That's the forest! They sell vegetable and grass seeds, and they can tell you what to do. Hello! Visit Florist Lilia for flowers and vegetables. She'll be important. The church! The children study there. Oh, so it's a theocracy. I thought there was separation of church and state. That's the bar! It's open in the evening! Not that I would know anything about that. You go up there to get to the village square. It's where we hold our festivals. Not all festivals, but most of them. That's the tool and craft shop. You can buy farm tools and sun-dry goods there. Hello. We'll be seeing a lot more of him in the game. I want to go here. That's the bakery. It has a good reputation. Hello. Please drop by for a bite. She'll also be important. 
That's the potion shop. You can drink medicine when you feel sick. But rest is the best thing. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. That's the midwife shop. He doesn't care for that. This is my wife and daughter. You can read books in the library. Make good use of it. Welcome to Flower Bud Village. Well, I think I've showed you all the main places. Take care and good luck. Hey, thanks, Mayor. You're a pal. Oh, and there's this guy. Hey, you're the old man's grandson, right? Nice to meet you. I'm a buyer. He doesn't tell us his name. His name's Zack, by the way. But he just says, I'm a buyer. Your grandpa and I knew each other for a long time. Let me tell you how to ship goods. Put the vegetables you grow and the stuff you get in the mountains in this shipping crate. I pick them up in the evening and pay you cash. There's a toolbox in your house and a notebook explaining how to use them. To some TV programs are also very instructive. Find things that you can do and you get used to the work slowly. Well, goodbye and good luck. Man, that guy's ripped. Where do you work out, man? There's no gym on Flower Bud Village. Anyway, so this is our farm. As you can see, it is a complete total dump. And you'll also notice that we pushed start. It was 6 o'clock in the morning at the beginning. And because we went on the mayor's tour, it advanced two hours. So that's a bit of a time waste. Also... Yeah, like, most people, when they first start playing Harvest Moon 64, you start by clearing your farm. Like, you spend several days just clearing up your farm. And if you're playing casually, that's not a bad way to go about it. But if you're trying to get the perfect game, these first few days are going to be super busy. And you have so much to do if you want to get on track. So, believe it or not, I'm actually going to reset. So, I'm actually not playing this on the official N64. I'm playing it on Project 64. And a few reasons for that. The main reason, though, are the save states. As... There are a few things in this game that are kind of luck-based, particularly the Harvest Festival, which we'll get into much later in the game. Using save states really helps out with that. It just minimizes all the luck stuff that we need to get in order to get the perfect game. I will not be abusing save states if I can help it. I'm not going to do it just to, like, instantly get some of the power nuts in the game, which we'll get into those in a bit. But, yeah, so I made a save state at the very beginning of this Let's Play. As you can see, oh, that's right, I still need to <laughs> remake my folder and all that. Oops. Sorry about that. But yeah. The mayor's, like, you can decline going around and seeing the village with the mayor, and that saves you two hours. That's two hours you really, really want at the beginning of the game. And yes, most people just literally go around and clear up your farm for, like, several days until it's completely clear, and then they start worrying about, like, getting money and stuff. That's not a good way to go about it. I'm not Colors Farm. Trust me, you want to start making money right away, as well as befriending a few select villagers that'll be useful. It's also important to note there are lots of glitches in this game, as I mentioned earlier. I will be making full use of them. <laughs> a lot of them are very well known. Anyways, so let's start. Actually, I'm going to make another save state right here. Just in case this first day goes really, really, really horribly, I don't want to have to re-input all of the stuff, like my name and such. So if you ever hear like a lull in the music, that's me making a save state. Alright, very first thing you want to do is go out... And this way, towards Moon Mountain. This is where you can forge for stuff in the forest. You can pick up stuff with A and put it in your rucksack with up C. This is a fisherman. Talk to him immediately. Hello, how are you doing? You know what they say about all work and no play. It's good to have a hobby. How about fishing? I'll fish. I'll give you one of my rods. After you equip it, use the B button to cast. If you get a bite, quickly release the B button. And we get a new tool, the fishing pole. Try it. So the fishing pole lets us fish. The fishing's kind of hard in this. What we do is hold B. If it starts moving, release B immediately. Oh, that's good. Oh, two big fish. Early in the morning, you can catch more fish, I've noticed. Wow, three big fish. I That's actually... That's super good, and also kind of bad, because I want to get a medium or small fish as well. Perfect. Alright, that went super, super well. 
All right, in other news... So we just want to pick up everything we physically can, more or less. So grapes, these are really good. These are medicinal herbs and they sell for 70G a piece. These are the most expensive items you can forage. So make sure you sell these. So there's a reason I wanted to get a large fish and then a smaller or medium sized fish because we can get two of the power nuts now. So what we want to do is come to this farm and start putting stuff in the shipping crate. This is edible grass that I just put in, the swirly stuff. Not to be confused with medicinal herbs, herbs they look similar, but medicinal herbs are worth 50G more. Actually, no, 40G more. Alright, sell the grapes. Wow, it's not even noon and we already are making amazing progress. Sweet! Alright. Sell the fish. Big fish sell for a lot, so that's really good. And yeah, again, we're just ignoring our farm for uh, for a little bit. I'm actually going to go back into the f here just for a little bit for a couple reasons. Mainly, I want to pick up some flowers. Also, this pond. This is why I caught the fish. If you drop a large fish in this pond between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. in the day, this happens. Hey! What the heck? What gives? Aw, oh, no! -uh. A, a cap is supposed to appear and give me free stuff! That's baloney! That's a lot of baloney. Oh, forget this. I, You know what? I'm actually... I'm resetting. It might seem weird that I'm resetting, but I just wasted a lot of time and money. So, I'm, I'm not okay with doing that. I was supposed to get power nuts by doing that, but nope, fate had other ideas. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, give me a fishing pool, old man, come on! Alright. Well, I mean, gee, if we can't get the power nuts on the first day, then I'm not even gonna bother fishing at first. Power Nuts are good because they increase your stamina, which is kind of a commodity at the beginning of the game. We'll get more into stamina as the game goes on. Basically, you use a tool, it takes stamina. And there are more med medicinal herbs in here. So just for starters, we're gonna get as much stuff as we can from the forest, sell it all, come back, get a few flowers to give to some of the choice villagers, and then actually get started on our farm work. Oh, sweet. Actually, you can carry a... F well, I mean, this isn't going to help, really. You can also push down C to eat whatever you're holding, provided it's edible. So, like, edible grass, medicinal herbs, and the very berries that I've been picking up. You can eat all of those. That's our dog. We don't have to worry about him just yet. Like, in fact, we don't even have to worry about him pretty much at all this year. So, <laughs> sorry little Rory, but you're just kind of a nuisance at this point. I, he will play a very, very important role in Autumn, but that's a long ways away. All right, sweet. Ideally, I'd like to just go and get a couple more flowers. So what day is it? It's Wednesday, okay. So I want to get two more flowers, I think. Two more flowers sounds good. Ah, man, where are the flowers? Oh boy. This is taking more time than I wanted. Okay, there's some flowers, and there's some flowers on my way out. Right there. Flowers you cannot sell. However, you can give them to villagers, and it'll boost their affection. Technically, you can give the villagers anything and it'll boost their affection, but flowers tend to be pretty good. Alright, so first step we want to do, flower shop. Very first thing we want to do is buy some cabbage seeds. Those are cabbage seeds. They take longer, but you can sell them for more money. One pack costs 200G. We only have 300G today, so all we can do is buy one pack. 
So there are three different uh, seeds here. There are turnip seeds, potato seeds, and cabbage seeds. We want cabbage seeds because they're the most expensive uh, to sell. And also there's a girl in this game who really, really likes cabbage and we need to get her heart level up very quickly. There's potato seeds, which are kind of average, also pretty good because a lot of girls or just villagers in general like potatoes. Turnips are kind of lame because they, although they grow super quickly, like I think they take only four or five days to grow, they sell for almost nothing. So not really worth it and they don't make great gifts. Anyways, welcome to Flowerbud Village. Oh, you're the grandkid from the color farm. So you're going to run the farm, eh? That means you'll be a customer. Nice to meet you. This is Lilia. She's the flower shop owner. And she's also very grumpy when it comes to Weber. Uh, if you look at her calendar, it's a calendar. There's a big heart mark on the 15th of the month. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that calendar has other purposes. It basically is like little Easter eggs throughout the game. Okay, over here we have grass seeds, which are much more expensive. Let us grow our own fodder for cows and sheep. Not important right now. These are flower seeds. We can plant flowers on our farm. Again, not much point in the flower seeds except for one side quest. And the fact that if you buy flowers, you get points on a card. And there's a raffle at the end, which you can get rare items from. Also, oh, that's Papori's room. Don't go in. Yeah, her daughter's name is Papori. Or Papari, however you pronounce it. I mean, speaking of Papari... Hello, and welcome to our store. We have many kinds of flower and vegetable seeds. If you have any questions about any vegetables, just ask my mother. So this is Papori. She's one of the five girls in the game who you can marry eventually. Also, if you're going for the perfect game, I do not recommend marrying her because she's literally the only girl who you do not really have a time crunch to get up to maximum affection for. Also, she might just be my least favorite. No, she's not. Anyways, I'm May. What's your name? Hmm, now that we're not strangers anymore, so I guess it's okay to talk. This is May. She's the granddaughter of the midwife who we saw at the beginning of the game, as well as the daughter of the buff guy who buys our stuff, Zach. They say my mommy has gone to a faraway place. Oh. Bam, man, we're just getting, like, dark and depressing right off the bat. Bam. Hi, I'm Kent. Nice to meet you. Hmm, it's so boring. Hello, my name is Stu. I'm seven years old. What are you gonna do on the farm? Well, lots of stuff eventually. How do you do? So you're going to run the farm, hmm? I know it's a lot of work. Good luck! This is Pastor Brown. He's the pastor at the church. He's pretty cool. Anyways, that's not what we're focusing on. What we want to do... Okay, here we go. Hi, we make our cakes using Granny's recipe. They're great. Try some. We're closed Mondays and holidays, too. This is Ellie. She did not introduce our, herself. She's the girl who kind of runs the bakery or co-runs the bakery. She's awesome. And we're going to give her flowers. Oh, thank you. That makes me happy. Giving girls gifts and talking to them boosts their affection. You want to boost girls' affections. Nice to meet you. So you're the new owner of that farm. I'm the master of the bakery. Please drop by the shop for a rest when you're tired. This is, uh, Chef... Not Chef. This is Jeff. He's the bakery master. And he kind of reminds me of, like, uh, Luigi if he wasn't really into green. We'll get more into the bakery later. Hello, it's been a long time, eh? But of course you don't remember. Last time we met, you were just a sprout. That's Ellie's grandma. She's amazing. Rick's open 10 to 6. Closed Wednesdays and weekends. So his shop is closed a ton. Also, he's closed if there's bad weather. So Rick's is rarely open, which is a shame because Rick has some really, really useful stuff. This is the craft shop. Say, aren't you the grandson of the old farmer? I'm Saibara the artisan. I make souvenirs. This guy's basically Gimli if he decided to live with humans. That's not for sale. It was one of my mistakes. Then why is it here? We can't buy anything from him yet. Alright. What we want to do is go into the library. <laughs> Hello. I'm the receptionist at the library. My name is Maria. Nice to meet you. This is Maria. She's the daughter of the mayor. And... We are on an extremely tight time crunch to get her to pink heart if we want to get everything in the game. Specifically, there's a photo you can get with Maria, but you can only get it in summer if she's at 
maximum affection. Or rather, I had a pink heart, I guess you could say. So we literally have, like, less than two seasons to get her up to max affection. So we need to talk to her and give her gifts every day. Th thank you very much. <laughs> Hello. So she's very shy around us at first, but once you get her to uh, pass the white heart rank, uh, she'll uh, get more confident around us. I'd be happy if you visited the library between jobs. Yeah, you'll see there's the white heart at the end of her text box. All five of the main girls you can woo have that. That lets you know what their affection's at. Although every character has an affection meter, they're the only ones who you can actually see. <laughs> and yep, they're the cats. <laughs> We're, I'm kind of ignoring a lot of the villagers just because we don't have much time today. All right, we're gonna go to Green Ranch here to get our horse and introduce ourselves to some new characters. This is not our horse, unfortunately. Cliff is hard to please. Do you like horses? Heck yeah! Oh, you do? You seem like a nice guy. Say, I need to ask you something. Are you listening? Wait here a minute! Ooh, who's this? Hey brother, what about him? Reflexes are quick. Seems good, don't you think? I don't think so. Hey brother! I'm sorry, my brother's a social disaster. Truth is, we want you to enter in the local horse race! We'll give you Cliff's brother. Wow, that, that this is all so sudden. Do you think you can do it? If you can be responsible and giving, you can take the pony. It's not a pony, it's a colt. There's a difference. I'll enter. Okay, I'll bring it to your farm. They don't introduce uh, any of their names. Thank you, do your best and win the next race. It's literally impossible for you to win the next horse race. Oh yes, give him a name. Enter your horse's name. Uh... Let's go with Tobias. Tobias, huh? That's a good name. Please take good care of him. If you treat him with love, he'll grow up to be strong. Do your best, I will too. I'll drop by sometimes. Yeah. Also, Weird Fane, there's a dead end up here, and yet all three of them and the cult were just hanging out up there for some reason. I don't know why. Anyways, if we go down here... Hello, I'm Anne. Nice to meet you. My family runs a ranch. If you ever want to raise animals, just talk to my dad. Yep, Anne's one of the other girls that we can woo to uh, be our wife eventually. She's awesome. Despite the fact that she really looks like she's 12, and ki Papori kind of does too... She's hilarious and very likable. Anyways, we're gonna give our last flower to her. Why is that for me? Thank you. Hmm. This is Gray. He's Anne's brother, and as she very, very accurately put it, he is a social disaster. He's kind of a jerk, but he can soften up a little bit. Oh yeah! Hi, I'm the village mailman. Name's Harris. Nice to meet you. Hey, Harris. Alright. Now we are finally ready to actually do some farm work. Yay. This is our mailbox. You can check it occasionally. You might have mail. Anyways, we're going to spend the rest of the day clearing up some of the... Uh, <laughs> some of the junk on our farm. So we're going to use the hammer to destroy our rocks. You can use the sickle to destroy the weeds, but you can also just pick them up and throw them, and that doesn't waste any energy, unlike the sickle. Alright, we've cleared ourselves a nice little patch. What we want to do is make a 3x3 three three wide square grid for our cabbage seeds. Just like this. This is all today's shipment, right? I'm taking it, okay? So yep, this, at 5 o'clock all of your stuff will be taken by Zack and then you will get money. So you'll notice we have 490G now and we spent 200 on cabbage seeds. So... Yeah, just one trip to the forest gave us quite a bit of money, which is awesome. So what we're going to do now, sprinkle the cabbage seeds on the grid. It'll spread it in a 3x3 pattern, and now we need to water them. 
Also, what we want to do is make sure we clear a decent portion of the farm because every time you sleep, more weeds grow. Like, three or four weeds grow if you sleep. And we do not want them to overwrite our crops. And if there's junk on other squares, that means those are squares that are, it can't pick. So it's more likely to pick the ones that you just planted. So you can stay up as late as you want, but if you stay up at uh, at 5.59 a.m., it'll reset to the next day, and you will not get any stamina back, which is not good. You also will not get any fatigue back, which will get more into fatigue a little bit. But basically, the longer you sleep, the stronger you're going to be the next day, and the less likely you are to get sick. And if you want the best ending in the game, sorry, I'm still... <laughs> it's been a while since I've played this. If you get sick more than two times throughout the course of the game, you cannot get the best ending. So that's a bit of a shame. Another, another reason why I want to use save states. Because you can just get sick randomly. Alright, cool. We watered all of our stuff. Now, we still have a couple more hours. We haven't really used much stamina today, so... I'll just start by killing more rocks. These giant rocks you can kill. You can just have to hit them multiple times. Or you can just wait till you level up your hammer. Yeah, the tools in this game you can level up, and they get stronger, and they can do more stuff. Okay. I think that's good for tonight. I don't want to stay up too late. However, there's one thing you should do before going to bed. At the beginning of the game... So I mentioned you can level up your tools. You do this just by using them. You want to use your tools a lot, but especially you want to use your watering can a lot, because if you max out your watering can... Not only can it carry more water, but it can also just water all, like, nine of your plants at once. That's really, really good, and it saves so much time. So you really want to get your watering can leveled up. So I would just grind pretty much the last of your stamina every night just using your watering can. Tonight I'm not going to go all the way just because I really don't want to get sick. And also because I stayed up fairly late, so I'm not going to get a whole lot of stamina back. And yes, you do not even have to have water in the watering can to level it up. You just need to use it. Okay, he's sitting down, rocking back and forth. That means he's very low on stamina, and you should probably stop. You can still keep going, but if you keep going, eventually he literally will not be able to use tools at all. By the way, our little guy's name is Jack, or whatever you decide to name it. Anyways, very important to level up your watering can as fast as possible, and I think today went pretty well. Aside from the fact we didn't get the two power nuts I wanted, we can always just try that tomorrow. And I, I guess maybe the first day is weird and you can't do that. But it, it's very important to get as much stamina as soon as possible because stamina is a very limited commodity this early in the game. Anyways, wow, I can't believe we only got one day done on the first video. And again, very slow pace. We There was so much to explain and so much to do in this first episode, like to meet and introduce all the different game mechanics. Not all days are going to be this long. In fact... I pretty much guarantee no day in the future is going to be this long. Especially since I don't intend on restarting days unless I absolutely have to. I felt like I absolutely had to yesterday. Even though, admittedly, I probably would have made a lot more money yesterday if I hadn't reset. But at the same time, I also would have lost a lot more time and I had to stay up later. And I wasn't really willing to do that. Anyways, enough rambling. Tomorrow... Will be exciting. We're going to go back, do kind of the same thing, harvest all the stuff today, but we're also going to catch fish, try to get those two power nuts, give gifts to the same people, maybe some more people, buy more seeds, yada, yada, yada. All right, so what I'm going to do is every time right before I go to sleep, I'm going to make a save state because it's important if a lot of stuff is determined just by sleeping. And if you sleep without before making a save state, you can't change what that determines, which is a bit annoying. For example, the weather. Guess what? If tomorrow's a terrible weather day, you might want to reset. Guess what? If you reset, it's still going to be terrible weather. But if you make a save state and then sleep again, you can change that. So that's pretty nice. So you can go here. So you have a couple options. Diary, tool note, which gives you uh, tutorials on how to use the tools. An estimate, which is uh, gives you kind of like the totals of how much lumber you have, how much money you have. An album, which gives you your photo album. This is one of the main things we're going to be completing in the game. You start with one photo. Which is a picture taken together with Grandpa when you were young. And as you can see, there are quite a few entries. One of the requirements to get the best ending is you need to fill this photo album. And some of the photos are very hard to get. And then the other option is just return. What we want to do is hit a diary. Three options. You can write in diary, which will save your game and cause you to sleep to the next day. You can sleep, but you won't save. 
which actually can be useful in the game, or you can just not sleep, and it won't save. So in order to save in this, you have to actually sleep and go to the next day. Alright, my voice is starting to give out, so I think we need to end the episode off here. Thanks for watching, I'm Colorful Artie. I hope you guys like this series. If you, if you watched this episode and wasn't wild about it, give it two or three episodes, and you'll get a feel of how the Let's Play is going to go, as well as what else this game has to offer, because we've barely even scratched the surface thus far. It is a really fun game, and I really hope you guys join in. In the meantime, I'm Colorful Artie. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you for the next episode. We'll be getting some more farm work done. Anyhow, have a great day, and God bless wherever you are.